get started. So um, we're going to talk about finding the right funding for your clients. And I'm Heather Satterly. And Liz. Liz Scott. Liz Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and we are two accounting professionals that geek out with technology and um, have brought the happy hour to all of you so that you guys can stay apprised of all of the new technology and advances that are happening within our industry, um, specifically in the QuickBooks ecosystem. So excited to have you all with us today. Liz, you want to give a big old shout out to our lovely Champagne Level sponsors? Absolutely. So we have been absolutely thrilled this year, 2020, to have our Champagne sponsor, Right Networks. And so many of us are very familiar with Right Networks. They are the preferred hosting solution for QuickBooks Desktop. So being able to make sure that you have remote access from anywhere. So most of us already know Right Networks, and we're thrilled to have them. Fantastic. And then a huge thank you to our sponsors for today's episode, Funbox. Um, Leslie and Greg's kind of behind the scenes, but thank you for joining us today. Um, we're really excited, as I, as I mentioned, when we kicked this off. So We uh, are. And, you know, I'm yeah. going to throw something in there. You know, Funbox sure. has been a, an app that our clients have been using for years. And so we tested it internally inside of the firm because we wanted to see how it worked before we rolled it out to our clients. And I have just been over and over thrilled at how easy it is to use. So I'm excited to bring this technology to our peers so that way you're empowered to go off and use it too. And we're excited to share more about it. It's, it's, this is a perfect time to be talking about it. There's um, obviously a lot of need in the market for this kind of product. So happy to be here and happy to share with everyone. Fantastic. So Leslie, oops, I just totally double clicked right through that slide. So Leslie, could you just take a second to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and your role with Funbox? Of course. Um, so I am the chief marketing officer at Funbox. Um, uh, I won't go through the nitty gritty of my experience just to say I've been doing marketing for a long, long time. Um, but, uh, you know, I was thinking about it as I was preparing for this and thinking, why do I, why do I love marketing? And the thing I really love about it is because I love talking to customers and I love understanding what they do and what the challenges they have and how I can help. And so it's one of the things that has really kept me somewhat sane during these crazy times as I felt compelled to talk to many of our customers. Uh, many of them have been accountants, by the way, um, and really tried to understand what's happening with their customers. And it's been so inspiring to hear how resourceful and resilient small business owners have been um, as they navigate these times. Um, and it's been incredibly rewarding to hear how Funbox has been a part of the journey. Um, and, and what has really come through loud and clear is um, that most, if not all the businesses I spoke with really lean on their accounts heavily and have done so probably even more so um, in the past few months as they think about um, everything that they're trying to do. And, and they really look to their account as a financial advisor and someone who understands their business. So, I think the, the goals that we have at Funbox are very well aligned with that. And so it's exciting to be here talking about how we can better empower small businesses. Oh, I think you're on mute, Heather. My hotkeys aren't working today. My Zoom has been a little funny. I think it has something to do with these new filters that they just added. But um, I couldn't agree more, uh, Leslie, that it's been, it, it has been really heartwarming um, to see how small businesses have stepped up to protect their employees and how accounting professionals and other professionals have stepped up to help their clients and even beyond their clients, just businesses in general. Um, I know our firm, we've helped people that aren't, you know, businesses that aren't any of our clients that had questions. Um, and I see so much of that um, going on. So um, it really does kind of warm your heart. Yep, it's why, it's why we're here. It's, it's great, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Great. So our agenda for today is, uh, we've already welcomed you. So we're going <laughs> to jump right into finding the right um, funding for your clients. Going to raise a toast. Um, we're going to get a little preview of what the experience inside um, 
w with Funbox, whether you're inside QuickBooks or somewhere else, how, how that works. And then we're going to talk about our coolest thing this month and have a preview of our next episode. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Um, Liz and I have a couple of slides we're just going to kind of go through, and then I'm, we're going to hand the reins over to you, Leslie. Okay. Um, so you ready to get started, Liz? Yes, right. absolutely. So we thought it would be a good uh, a good idea first to set the stage on um, you know how many clients out there or how many businesses out there are looking for funding, and so this kind of is a super busy slide, um, but in a nutshell, it shows the problem that we see with clients getting funding. It's um, it's a long process. Um, it takes a lot of paperwork, um, and it really you know, it really uh, it can be can be um, a real challenge yeah, for our clients. You know, and this is one of those areas that whenever I'm talking to clients and we're having that monthly review, we're always going through and we're looking at the receivables and yep. the payables and trying to figure out what's our plan and how are we going to manage it. So this is a big conversation. And I found this slide really fascinating because, you know, we love our charts and numbers. And you can see some of these details here. So based on the size of the business or size of the, the expected dollars, how many days yeah. out they are. And that really gives you an idea of the cash flow crunch that they're under. And your know, cash flow is a big area of interest for me. And one of the things that, you know, diving into the details, we know is some of these businesses that are failing, they're profitable businesses. They're just lacking funds for now. Exactly. And so it's really, really you know, helpful to be able to find something that will help them through that little short time period that they have in order to be able to make it over that hurdle that they Definitely. have. Definitely. Um, talking about, whoops, talking about how accountants are really, as you mentioned, um, Liz, really well suited to help our clients as we are having those conversations, especially now um, more than ever before during this this crisis where people of most businesses have been impacted by it. So, you know, how can we help our clients find the right funding options? Um, how, why are we even qualified to, you know, to help our, our clients with this? And what I would say is we're analytical, right? Just by our nature of being accountants, we're analytical. We're looking at the numbers all day. Um, we also are working with a wide variety of clients. We see what works. We see what doesn't work, right? Um, that's my favorite part. If I have to share one of my all-time favorite parts about my job, I love seeing how other people operate. Definitely. And so, I mean, that's, that's a resource that we have that our small business owners don't understand because they don't have that same experience. So we're able to look across at a lot of different clients and kind of gather in, you know, all of these details and how they operate and function. And, and we're able to see some of these trends that they don't realize are normal trends. Right. So we're able to be able to say, you know, hey, gauging across all of the types of businesses like you, this is normal. So that you know lowers the anxiety level. And then to also be able to say, okay, we can help you too, because other people like you need the same kind of help. Definitely. And I think, you know, that was one of the things about this particular in the pandemic, not to you know dwell too much on that, but we were all going through the same thing. The accounting firms, we were facing the same challenges as all of our clients. And so, you know, it says here we have empathy. We're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And so we're learning from each other, but you know, we've got the training, right? And the expertise to go through and kind of help our clients find the right path to get through a crisis like this for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Um, business cash flow needs. There's so many reasons why a, a, a business might need cash flow or a, a loan, you know, payroll obligations. Maybe they need to expand. There's an opportunity. I mean, how many times has a, has a client come to you, Liz, or Leslie, even with your, um, with, with Funbox, where a client is faced with an opportunity that they don't have the cash to take, right? There's this huge opportunity that's based, you know, staring them in the eye and they need that working capital to either, you know, onboard new employees or buy, you know, materials and inventory to take, you know, to seize an opportunity that, um, that really can help them grow their business. If I can just weigh in for one second on that, that, that is actually exactly why Funbox exists. Our founder's mother had a business and she was growing like crazy. And she obviously had to invest into growth to do so. 
And she could not get capital. She could not get a source of funding anywhere. And her business failed. Not because her fundamentals weren't there, because she couldn't get the capital she needed to keep up with the growth sh that she was seeing. So I think that is exactly right. And there's, there's so many different ways that, that uh, a product like ours can help with that. Definitely. Yeah, so I mean, there's so many different reasons um, to, you know, that people need cash and finding the right source of cash for them mm -hmm. is really, really important. Um, the different types of, of, of business lending, um, we're going to be talking about one in particular that's just super easy, but the different types of business lending that we see traditionally is we've got the traditional term loans, right? And those are very heavy on the paperwork, right? A traditional term loan, you're talking about going and applying to a bank. Um, they're asking for lots of information. We have li lines of credit, which basically as you, you're, you're extended a line of credit, um, for a certain amount, you can draw down on that line of credit. When you pay it back, it frees up more credit that you can use um, for other endeavors. Um, invoice factoring. Um, so if you have receivables that you're carrying on your books, those have value even though they're not paid. So you may opt to um, factor those out to a third party company that will basically buy the receivables from you, give you the cash um, for a percentage of the value of those receivables and then the repayment to the lender is made as you collect on those. And that can be done in a couple of different ways. Right, Liz? Either you pay the lender as you receive it or the lender receives the money directly from, um, from your customers, right? Yep. Um, what else do we have here, Liz? So uh, did you talk about the crowd lending? Because crowd lending is kind of a new option that hasn't been uh, explored everywhere, but whenever you're talking about crowd lending, some of those are the uh, Square and PayPal. And so instead of doing a traditional loan, you can do peer to peer lending and you're able to, in a group, do some borrowing in a network of people. Yeah, there's, there's a couple out there and they, I think there's um, Lending Club, which is more of the consumer. I think they're starting to dip their toes into the business lending. And then there's Opportunity Fund, which is a big one, right? And they do the crowd lending where basically you apply for the credit and then investors, individual investors, people like you and me, they actually invest into the pool of funds that then fund these loans. And then you receive a return on them as the loans are pay, uh, paid back. The investors receive money back um, from the crowd funding. Yep. Um, you have, go ahead, Liz. Oh, no, I, I was that? just going to say that oh. those rates you know, can, and terms can really vary with the crowd lending. So it just right, they really can. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. Um, capital leases, capital leases are a way that you can go. There's, you know, um, when you look at capital leases, there's some tax advantages to capital leases. Um, there's, you know, but those are one way that basically you lease the, uh, the, the, the equipment. Those are usually when you're buying a tangible piece of equipment or property. Um, you merchant cash advances like Square and PayPal, as you were mentioning, Liz, where basically it, they give you a loan um, based on what they expect you to receive from your merchant services processing in your future sales, and then you pay back, yeah. and then, as you said, the crowd lending. So those are just, those are just different types of, of lending that we thought we would go over. Um, Liz, you want to talk a, a little bit about you know, weighing the risks of these different types of lending with our clients? Yeah, absolutely. Because with, especially during a time when they're feeling this crunch of, I don't have enough capital, one of the things that sometimes they forget to evaluate is how am I going to pay it back? So it might meet the now need, but it, you need to also plan for the future. So I think that that's another reason that we're really well positioned to help our clients whenever we're talking about what kind of funding is out there. You know, we're not going to tell them to do it, but we can give them the advice and some of the risks that are involved, that's where the advice comes in. And, you know, being able to understand uh, what, what your cash flow projections look like in the future, we don't have to go through and have a detailed analyzed position, but we do need to just make sure that we have the enough, enough funds to pay back these loans. So talking about the compounding interest, those are sometimes whenever we have uh, you know, our, our business owners, a lot of them are visionaries. And so they think about the problem right now. They don't always think about the long term. So evaluating some of the risks and, and, you know, the compound interest is one of those risks that's involved. Thinking about those kinds of things, we're just able to walk them through. 
not making the decision for them. We're just kind of walking them through. Here's some different options that are available and people like you have used before. You know, one of the biggest mistakes that I see with um, my clients uh, or more, I don't want to say biggest, common mistakes that I think um, is, is not calculating enough, right? Because you said, you know, they, they tend to be short-sighted and there's typically an immediate need that they have for cash. And so when they're looking at that lending, you know, how much they should borrow, they're not looking far enough into the future, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they end up in the wrong type of product based on what their immediate needs are. So I think that's another place where we, we can kind of step in and help them to, you know, kind of, I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Liz? You, we share a brain, but like help them navigate and kind of look at the bigger picture and look beyond what the immediate need is to, um, you know, uh, really the... So Leslie was talking about that Fundbox was started for investment purposes and, and what you're making me think of is that there's a lot of times whenever they're very, our, our clients are sometimes scared of asking for funds. And so they might not ask for enough. Well, if you don't get enough, you can't quite finish it. So right. I think that that's part of the evaluation that you're saying, get enough funds to make assessment. it through yeah. whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Right. And Lisa said that she found the word I couldn't find needs assessment. Needs assessment. Thank needs you, Lisa. Assessment. Thank you, Lisa. Cool. So, uh, you know, um, these are just some slides. I think we're going to kind of click through these for time's sake, but some of the, um, we're, we'll include these slides out on our website to uh, just kind of talking about some of the pros and cons of different types of lending. So the traditional credit net terms, you know, there's a periodic risk assessment. The seller typically assumes 100% of the risk. The cash flow cycle is slower and it's time consuming and expensive to, uh, to administer. And the credit worthiness shuts not just some buyers out, it actually shuts a lot of buyers out, right? I agree. And you know, whenever you think about business worthiness, a lot of our businesses has never, have never looked and evaluated, do their business ha does it have credit? Right. So that's, a, that's a thing that a lot of new businesses just have never needed and have never evaluated. Right. And then, you know, trade credit, which is financing on demand, that's dynamic risk assessment, on demand access to capital. Typically you get better repayment terms. Um, there's financing at the point of the transaction and more buyers are gonna qualify for that. So I think it's time for us to raise a toast to Funbox. And then we wanna dig in and learn about Funbox and how it can really help with our clients. So. Um, I'm so excited about this drink. This is, we were talking about this earlier, Leslie, like this is the prettiest drink image we think we've ever had on yeah. Happy Hour. Yes. And I was reading about this drink and there actually is a way to make like that whole like um, dry, ice. dry ice effect. Oh. We didn't do yeah. that for today, but. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize we were drinking before the presentation, but I'm ready. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what this is all about. So I have to say I went big. Ooh, you did look at you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, cheers, ladies. Thank you. Cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I, I have a great. blue curacao at my house, so I'll have to I'll have to save that for another time. Well, <laughs> the dry ice is a nice touch because yes. it adds a little bit of carbonation to it. <laughs> very classy. Very classy. Well, tonic water has a little bit of carbonation, but not a ton. Yeah. Not a ton. It's very slight. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. So let's go ahead and we're going to hand over the reins to you. Do you want me to click as you tell me to click or do you want to share your screen and kind of go through on your own? Um, I, if you don't mind, if you can drive, I'll just let you know when to click. Um, I think that would be great. That sounds great. Fantastic. Okay. Fabulous. So, so we can get started. Thank you again for having me here. It's really great. Um, I'm actually out here on the West coast where it's hot and smoky today. Um, so it's, uh, it's uh, interesting times we live in, but um, here we are. Uh, so <laughs> we, can, we can skip through this. We've already kind of talked about who I am, um, but we haven't talked about much about Funbox. So um, Funbox is a financial technology company and we often refer to ourselves as a FinTech. That's sort of kind of like the industry term. Um, it's a combination of financial services and technology. 
Um, we are specifically uh, purpose built um, for small businesses. We are dedicated to powering the small business economy, which you cannot ever underestimate the power of the small business economy. And so here we are in a crazy time trying to find ways to support this community. Um, we do it with innovative credit and payment solutions. Our core product is a revolving line of credit, which um, you know, Heather and Liz just sort of talked through different types of credit. We, ours is a revolving line of credit. Um, it comes in 12 and 24 week um, terms. Um, we offer very fast and easy access to business credit for small businesses. And I think equally importantly, we um, also provide tools, resources, and really the industry's best customer experience um, that delivers an overall service uh, that all small businesses deserve. Um, so we do that very differently. Um, and, and overall, our goal is really to unlock potential of small businesses um, with both financial agility, meaning giving small businesses the tools and the funding they need to be nimble, um, and also peace of mind. I mean, this concept ha has come up again and again, um, never more so in the last few months. This, this idea that um, you can have the peace of mind to know that the financials are okay and you can focus on your business. Um, I think that is a really critical part of what we deliver. Um, so that, that's Funbox. Uh, the next slide really just kind of, uh, I wanted to give a little context on kind of why Funbox exists. Um, obviously I give the specific example of our founder's mother, but, but more broadly, um, it really starts with the traditional bank experience that small businesses typically go through. Um, it is not good. Um, so it's time consuming, it's labor intensive, it requires a lot of paper. We have data that shows it can take upwards of 30 hours to fill out a single application. Um, and you might not be approved. You might have to go to multiple institutions to get approved. So um, it's not an easy process. There are also structural reasons why traditional banks um, don't serve small business as well. Um, the, you know, the traditional bank cost structure and servicing costs um, are, are essentially the same for a small business versus a large business. Um, the problem is that um, a bank is going to make a lot less money on a much smaller loan for a smaller business. So there is this small loan disincentive that is weighing on banks. And then you have the fact that you're just going to have lots and lots of fees. No matter which way you slice it, you're going to be hit with fees, whether it's low balance or uh, you know, any way you look at it, overdraft fees, you are going to be paying a lot of money for that experience. And really the icing on the cake is uh, that the, the overall customer experience and customer support is terrible. And, and I think the, the thing that really makes me feel bad is that many small businesses are just resigned to this. They're sort of like, yep, yep, it's going to be slow. It's going to cost a lot of money and I'm going to get terrible support. And it doesn't have to be that way. So uh, if we move to the next slide, we'll talk about um, where fintech has sort of entered the game. Um, so, I mean, I think the, the reason many fintechs exist, and certainly Funbox is one of those, is, is almost the anti-bank experience where we can step in where banks have been unable or unwilling to serve. Um, and it's particularly true in the small business market where access to credit has always been particularly challenging. Um, and Fintex can provide a better experience um, with both on the application and um, kind of credit management perspective, um, but also in terms of the control you have um, of the information you provide. So as we'll talk about later, um, there are different, different types of data that you can provide to, they give a better picture of your business, whether that's your invoicing data or your bank account data. Um, you can you can better represent the whole picture of your business. Um, and then lastly, of course, you know, just greater transparency around fees. You're going to know what you're paying, when and why, and that should never come as a surprise. So, you know, um, Leslie, I feel like what you just said about FinTech giving a better experience um, was so apparent during this whole PPP process. 
right? The big banks just couldn't cut it. And, and these, you know, these poor small businesses were waiting and waiting and waiting for their money, you know, weeks and weeks. And as soon as they allowed the fintech companies to come in and serve, those yeah. loans started going out and the money started getting to the people that really needed it. So I agree. I mean, that fintech experience, um, they're just, they're more agile. They're more able to, you know, react and deliver um, you know, quickly and easily to their, their customers. So hundred percent. Again, we're purpose built for this, right? So right. I think PPP, the paycheck protection program was a perfect example where big banks structurally were unable to serve and also just unwilling to go to bat for small businesses. And so right. they once again, put their big customers at the front of the line and small businesses were stuck. Until, until companies like Funbox and others, many jumped in um, and really uh, sort of opened the floodgates on the funding that was available. You know, it was it was almost miraculous, Leslie. It, that's what it felt like from you know where I was sitting was that I had all these clients that were waiting, and as soon as the fintech companies were able, yeah. you know they were getting their money within a week. It, was, it felt that way for us too. It was but amazing. Right? No, I mean, we thought, I mean, it was, we, we were so eager to get in and help our customers. Initially, when we, when we, and I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit from a presentation perspective, but, but, but we, we approached it initially as a way to help our customers. Um, and uh, we were, we were granted a license. And as a, as a, a licensed lender, we did as much as we could. And then we opened the doors to other small businesses because we realized we could. Yeah. And there was no reason not to. And I mean, that the response was, it brought tears to your eyes. I mean, I'm telling you that the, the reviews that we got are like, you guys saved my business. And it was really like, just, it still, it still makes me happy to think about. Well, and you know, I want to point out too, that it's very easy to use and it does not have to be big dollars. So I know y'all are kind of talking about some big dollars, but I just want to point out that really it can be smaller dollars that are borrowed frequently. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways that one, you know, some of my clients have used it is small amounts, pay it back, small amount, pay it back. And so it allowed them to have a lot of flexibility for a now situation. That's right. I mean, many people use our revolving line of credit as a really a working capital tool. It's not a, it's not really a rainy day fund. It's really like, how do I operate my business? Um, because as you mentioned, receivables, all businesses are waiting to get paid. They know it's coming. They just don't know exactly when. And so... Um, it's a, it is a perfect tool for that. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so we talked about a little bit about the times that we live in. Um, they're crazy. Um, they have changed a lot for everyone, right? Um, not just small businesses, not just um, accountants, um, fintech as well. So um, there is sort of this changing landscape that we are a part of. Um, and, you know, with any crisis, some companies have the ability to respond quickly and be resilient and others don't. And uh, for some fintechs, it has been a challenging time, um, while others have taken the opportunity to get closer to their customers and to innovate. And fortunately, Funbox was in the latter category. So we, we really, uh, we're really coming out of this um, in a great place. Um, and I think to your point, Heather, like it really was a, a moment when fintech could shine. Um, you know, the, the paycheck protection program, it was, it was so critical to the survival of all small businesses. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's still going, by the way. I mean, they're talking about another round. They're talking about, you know, people are now working their way through forgiveness. So um, that program is still one that we are um, actively participating in. But um, but man, talk about delivering relief at the kind of ninth hour. It was, uh, it was pretty, pretty impressive. Um, and I think the last thing I'll call out in terms of the changing list is just, it's more just macroeconomically that, you know, small businesses need credit that can flex with the needs. So um, obviously these times are very uncertain. Uncertainty is not a good thing for business. You need to know that you have credit that will be there for you when you need it. And so um, that's where we come in. All right, next slide. So the future. I wish I could sit up here and say, it's a totally clear picture. We know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, unfortunately, we're still in the middle of a pandemic with the associated economic turmoil. We have a political uh, election. Out here in California, half the state is burning. 
Um, so, so yeah, we have a little bit of uncertainty still, to say the least. Um, and that's true for fintechs and small businesses. On the fintech side, it's definitely been a time of consolidation and innovation. Um, we have a couple of what we used to consider direct competitors who've recently been acquired for pennies on the dollar, mainly because they were unable to rely on their core revenue streams during the pandemic and, and actually stopped originating um, altogether during the pandemic. Um, and on the flip side here at, at Funbox, we have been able to keep originating throughout um, and also take advantage of kind of the PPP opportunity for our customers and for others. So, um, so I think that was, that's good and will continue to be good. Um, on the small business side, just from a recovery perspective, I, I do expect, I expect it to be bumpy and inconsistent, kind of the same way we've seen the last few months. I mean, it will vary a lot by geography, by industry, um, some businesses have been incredibly resilient. Some have actually grown through this. It really, it really has depended both on luck and skill, which you have to have both of in this world right now. So, um, so I think that's going to continue to be the case, but a small business does need to be nimble and, and have the tools to be agile as conditions change. Um, I think the other thing is that trust is more important than ever in terms of the partner that you look to. Um, again, this is, you, you should, fintechs must be authentic in their advocacy of small businesses. Um, and small businesses should look for partners that have proven to be there through the hard times. Um, and I am, I'm really proud to be able to say that Funbox was one of those. And if you go online and, and look at some of our kind of reviews, you'll see, you'll see exactly how we stood up during this time. Um, and then lastly, this concept of financial agility is just, it, it's, it's, it's always important. It is increasingly important as we go through these kind of um, crises that a uh, small business can be prepared to, um, to shift it as the times change and, and can know that they have the ability to, to seize an opportunity when it, when it arises. So, okay, next slide. So um, again, so just a, just a quick, you know, we had, we did these amazing interviews this summer and I think I participated in 50 hours of interviews, which was, which was awesome um, and, and exhausting, but, but mostly awesome. Um, and what I heard again and again was that small businesses are really looking for a deeper relationship and this will come as no surprise, I'm sure to, to you two and to all the accountants on the the call that this, this idea of a relationship really hinges on, you need someone who can give you trusted advice. So someone who has the experience um, and, and so both the brain and the heart to be giving advice that makes sense. Um, someone who is a, an advocate for a business and who is really there um, to make sure that the business succeeds um, and that they know, the business knows that, that they're in their corner and I think lastly, they need uh, someone who really understands that every business is unique. You know, um, we were talking a little earlier about how you can see patterns across businesses and that is really important, understanding how businesses have similar, um, you know, activities, but also how they're different, I think is really important. And so that's what, one of the things that we focus on. And, yeah. You know, and I want to throw in too, I feel like whenever I've gone through funding journeys with clients, they are very understanding and forgiving that we don't have all the answers, but we do have some input. And so we look at things differently than they do. It's okay that we don't have all of the answers, funding answers, but what we're doing is laying out some options for them. And ultimately it's their decision but it's okay if you walk away from this conversation today going, hmm, I'm still a little fuzzy and a little confused. I feel like they're very fuzzy and very yeah. confused. So the fact that you know just a little bit more than they do makes you the expert all of a sudden. So they really do need that help and to and not I would be alone. Also, I would scary. also say that it's so important for accounting professionals, whether you're a bookkeeper, whether you're a CPA, an enrolled agent, to have relationships with lending partners that you trust that you can you know, refer to your clients that you know are gonna take really good care of them. Mm -hmm. And those partners will empower you, you know, with the answers that you need. 
right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's the key is, is expanding your network, making sure that you, you know, that, that you, that you have people that you can turn to as the professional to get the answers and yeah. ultimately the products that, that you need for your clients. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I love that slide you showed earlier with the different, um, funding options because it is about finding the right tool for the job. Um, it's, you, you, there's no one size fits all. And so I think it's, it's important and, and that's where accountants have, a really good perspective on what is the right tool for the job. I think that's great. Cool. All right. So I think it's one of our last slides. Um, just just a little more about how we do things differently. Um, I, I think you know, just in general at Funbox, we try and approach problems um, in a in a pretty uh, out of the box way. Uh, we try and, and that sounds very cliche, but um, but we try and, and address problems head on um, with really simple solutions. Um, and it's important to have a partner who is both bold and uh, a, and a real strong, um, trusted um, uh, you know collaborator in what you're doing. And so we really focus on delivering the best customer experience. And not just product experience, but the full service as well. Um, and we take a lot of time to understand what our customers need. And we are here for the long haul. Um, I think a, a good example of this is that we really have outperformed the market over the past few months as an organization. Um, we've made pretty good investments in data and machine learning that paid off. That made us a lot more resilient as these conditions changed. Um, we also have deep credit expertise and discipline. Um, and that discipline really resulted in much lower loss rates than others in our industry um, and meant that we could keep originating throughout this crisis. So we were both originating for our existing customers as well as acquiring new customers during this period when no one else was. And so now we're in a place where we really are looking to grow with our customers. Um, and frankly, we, you know, we, we think accountants are a really important component of that growth. So um, it's really great to be having this conversation today. Um, but when we look to the future, we really are proud of the fact that our experience is top notch. And you see that in everything uh, online, you see it in our reviews, you really do. It's, it's a feel good I do every morning. I go out and I look and see what people are saying about us online. I know that sounds crazy, but it makes me realize that we're doing the right thing because our, our customers love it. Um, and the support that we provide and that experience is, um, is it's not one that is replicated anywhere else. And, and in addition to the product and the, the service, we also really focus on information. So we spend a lot of time putting information out that we know our customers and, and even people who aren't our customers that they need any small business. Um, we had tremendous amounts of information around COVID-19 resources and it went down to the, it was at the federal, state and local uh, level where you could go in and say, God, what, what can I do? And then that shifted to PPP and now it's kind of moving into forgiveness, but also just generally we have a lot of guides out there to help small businesses as they navigate through this. Great point. Cool. Um, great. This has been good. I thought maybe next we would just do a little, uh, it's not really a demo, just look at a little bit at the product experience that is very simple. And I will, I will tell you, it's funny. One of the customer interviews stays in my, in my head on most days, this, this guy who was, um, a, so he ran a software company and he said, you know, Funbox is just stupid simple. He goes, and at any given point, I'm two, cl it's two clicks away from saving my butt. And I'm like, you know what? That pretty much sums it up right there. So um, I uh, like that because, you know, what I've experienced is in the beginning, there's some apprehensive clients who, who are scared of setting it up. But once they do, they're like, mm, I got this. And then they go back repeatedly and, and figure out more funding and, and yep. use that line of credit. So. Yep. Yeah, it is really, really easy. And, you know, the first part is just like the um, application onboarding, very easy. You just register, you collect, or sorry, you connect to a data source. And this can be either your accounting software or it can be a bank account. Um, you give us permission to access that data. 
we verify the information and within three minutes you have a decision. Um, so it's very quick, very painless. Um, the next step on the next slide is really, so then assuming that you are approved, um, you are given a credit line, a credit limit, and, and that credit line will actually increase over time as you use the product, as you're doing draws and paying them off, um, that will we'll learn about your business and um, you'll automatically increase um, over time, um, assuming you're, you're obviously paying off your loans. So very straightforward. Um, and you have the ability to pay off early if you want. So we have uh, two different terms, 12 weeks and 24 weeks. Um, if you get a week or three weeks or eight weeks or whatever in and you decide, you know what, I'm ready, I can pay it off now. No problem, pay it off, we'll waive the remaining fees, you're good to go. And you've just replenished your credit line. So it's very, very straightforward. And um, I feel like my clients have really liked that part, that it's predictable amounts of money that are gonna be drafted over and over again. It's kind of bite-sized pieces mm -hmm. and they just get used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes like second nature. And that, and that is where kind of like the the day-to-day -day working capital aspect of it is very, uh, very compelling. Yeah. Uh, also very easy to find for those of you experts on the QuickBooks app store. We're right there on the front page under the popular apps. Um, and you can apply from right within the product. It is seamless. It is integrated. Um, it is, it could not be easier. Um, and we have, we are very proud of the, the partnership that we have with Intuit. And, um, and we are, um, we love, we love our QuickBooks users for sure. Um, all right. So I'm trying to remember if there's anything else in the slides. Oh, just as the last one, and this is more of a takeaway, um, for more information, or if you want to go and, and actually apply, um, there's just a quick, um, URL there for you to go to and, um, take three minutes. That's all it takes. Um, so, uh, we're, we're here for you. That's fabulous. I, you know, I, I really am a champion of Funbox just because of how easy it is to use, how much my clients have been empowered by being able to access those dollars. And, uh, you know, I, I've never had a bad experience. So I'm, I'm a big fan. Well, thank you. That is really nice to hear. It means a lot. We're thrilled that you came on today to share with our viewers how to access it, you know, we always recommend apps in the app center. So we're always thankful whenever we have somebody who comes on that's already in that because that means that you've gone through the vetting process and we can also see reviews from other, other peers. And so um, you've, you've been around and been helping people for quite a while in a, a big, big way. Yeah. Yeah. We have a call, uh, a question from Yvonne. Um, is there a monthly fee? Uh, to use Funbox? No, no. There's no access fee, no origination fee. You pay fees for a draw, um, and that's it. And then Ross is wa uh, wanting to know, how does it compare with revolving credit card funding? Mm -hmm. So things like Square and PayPal, I think, is, is what he's referring to. Oh, I see. Um, well, so the Square and the PayPal is more of that kind of merchant cash advance in the sense that it's drawing right. from your... Um, for your prop from your processing. Um, so it's very, it is a different type of funding. Um, I'm trying to think of like how you would describe the different use cases, but um, it really just depends on how, how you want to be, um, how you want to be both um, pulling funds as well as paying back. So, um, you know, cause in, in the case of Funbox, you create a specific draw um, that can be, that can be for a specific invoice or not. Um, and, and then you pay it off on the schedule that you choose, which is 12 or 24 weeks, um, with something like a, um, a PayPal, you are, um, you're, you're going to be paying it off. Like they they'll basically take a piece of it out of your earnings moving forward. Um, now, and maybe I misunderstood because I actually saw what, were they talking about the cash advance for, um, or I, I was thinking more about the, um, kind of cash. I think they Workout. said they said it was revolving credit card funding. Okay. So okay. I'm not sure, Ross. If you could, you know, maybe um, type in a follow up. Um, I'm thinking that's what what, what he was right. referring right. to. But yeah. If I'm, okay. or if I'm wrong, just speak yeah. up, Ross, and we'll <laughs> we'll get the right question out there. Exactly. Because there's so many types of funding, right? Yeah. So. 
Yeah. So as far as like if somebody applies for Funbox, um, how does it work as far as, you know, you talked about the fees. Are the fees like an interest rate over a certain amount of time you're paying a certain interest rate based on your credit score? Yes. So the, the interest rate does vary by customer. Um, it starts at 4.66%. It depends both uh, on the individual as well as the term. So 12 weeks versus 24 weeks. So it will vary, um, but you'll see it when you go in to make a draw. It's very clear what your rate is. We also show very clearly what your weekly payment is going to be at every week over the term. So you'll never be surprised by what you're paying uh, just overall as well as on a weekly basis. So the interest rate is determined based on the draw. So at that time when you accept the terms, that's when, and that's it right. stays that way until you repay it. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Any other questions, Liz, that you're seeing? No, but I was muted. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, again, it's just one of the things that, that I've seen is starting off with a small dollar amount, you know, put, tipping your toe in, and then, you know, being able to use more funds as needed. So everybody's got to start somewhere. Right. And I feel like, you know, being able to just dive in and, and ask for a little bit of funds is very scary. And I think that the part that our, our clients get scared is when they go to the bank, their bank is ready for a business plan. They're ready for, you know, looking at their financial statements. They feel like they have to get really prepared for it. And so there's a lot of anxiety that's built up in just the going to the bank. And so this is definitely a, an easier process. Yeah. It's less scary. You, know, you don't have anybody staring at you saying <laughs> you don't get funded. And in fact, I haven't had an experience when somebody did not get funding. Mm -hmm. So Leslie, you and I were talking earlier before we went on, on air today about your partnerships with accounting firms and how you guys partner and you have specific partners that you do a lot of business with. Can you talk just a little bit about what that looks like and how somebody could, you know, you know, forge a partnership with, with Funbox and yeah. We, um, so we, we actually mainly partner with um, platforms. So for instance, we have partnered with um, QuickBooks. We're partnered with some other platforms like FreshBooks um, and a few others. So um, we like to, I think that's actually one way that we've kind of differentiated is by being very closely integrated into these uh, these platforms. It makes for a customer's experience that is absolutely seamless. And so that's that's where we focused our partnerships. Um, we uh, we are looking to uh, to kind of to to explore more what I'll call kind of industry focused partnerships and and accounting is one that we are very interested in um, accountants in particular. Uh, because this is a core customer for us, um, both in terms of, um, you know, as we, as we look at customers that we, that, that have shown such great resilience through this, um, accounts are a great example. You know, the business for accountants um, was pretty steady through COVID. And, and so the more we can find people like that, the more we want to help and serve. Um, and of course, like their customer base uh, um, is one that is also, um, you know, one we'd like to serve as well. So, um, so we're, we're definitely exploring that. Um, we have, we, we do have a, a large segment of kind of critical mass of accounts within our customer base. Um, and we're looking at a more formal partner program around that. Well, and it makes sense. Again, it's like, it's that whole idea of, of the partnership that's happening between accountants and their small business owners. So, you know, once you've done it with one, it's less scary to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. We, we have some questions that are rolling in. I don't know, Greg, if you want to look at some of those questions and then also Heather, it feels like this would be a good time to put up our poll because there's a lot of interest that's happening. And so let's make sure that those people who have additional questions are able to get those resources. Uh, so, would you like to have more information about Funbox? And it sounds like there are several here that are interested Great. and have some really good questions. And so, Shelly was asking about the interest rate as different for each draw. Do you want to answer that one or is it set? Um, well, so your 
it's our pricing changes over time. Um, and, uh, but it will never change within a specific draw. So once you make a draw, that's the price that you'll have for the length of that draw. Um, but your price can go up and down over time, um, sort of similar to your credit line. Um, we sort of reassess on a regular basis and see where you are um, and, and at that point give you the pricing that's appropriate. That's fantastic. And it's easy to see your upcoming payments with Fundbox. Yes. So it becomes one of those uh, very standard things. And what I have done in the past is set up a memorized transaction. So it automatically posts into the checking account, into the client knows this is happening over and over again. Yeah. Because it is set Yeah, out. we'll actually um, draw from the bank account every week. So it's, it's not even something that really needs to be set up. Um, it's part of the process is you agree to do these weekly debits. And so you don't have to think about it. I mean, we send you reminders just as a, hey, this is happening. Um, but when you, when you make that first draw, it'll, it, it all happens for you, essentially. I agree with you. So I think that what I want to point out is you're saying the bookkeeping is, is kind of built in. Mm -hmm. So there's some features that are inside of QuickBooks. It's really easy to set up that original liability and then being able to see those payments post and, and, you know, bank feeds recognizes them. So it, it's, it's, it is very easy bookkeeping. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. So, Heather, we got the poll up. We've got some responses. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out the poll. Okay. So I'll count everybody down. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and hey, Lou, can you do me a favor? I want to, we're going to do our coolest thing this month. Mm -hmm. And we need to be logged into QuickBooks. So, I guess, can you get logged into QuickBooks for us? And um, I'll show the slides and then you can share your screen. That work? Sure, sure. Uh, and the poll is still up. So, all right, I have ended the polling and I'm going to share my screen uh, just to go over our, our slide of our coolest thing. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. We actually have two cool things, by the way. We have the official cool thing this month and then we have the unofficial cool thing this month. Um, and I'm just going to give everybody a, a, a preview of the unofficial cool thing this month. Well, and uh, Heather, while you're doing that, I don't have a, um, like this is live in some of my clients, but I, I don't have a QuickBooks file I can show this in. Oh, okay. So is it, is it, it's not in the demo company? Um, I'm logging into the test, but I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just show it. I have screenshots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you guys may have noticed, um, I have a mustache and um, it just kind of appeared there. And the reason it appeared there is our unofficial coolest thing this month is that Zoom now has uh, filters. So Liz now has her lovely face mask. Um, there's a bunch of filters. If you go into the, uh, the little drop down next to your video where you would go to use a virtual background, you're now going to see some fun things in the, you'll see a new tab for video filters. And these are just some of the cool filters that you guys can play with. So Liz and I discovered this the other day and wasted almost an entire <laughs> 45 minutes having fun with um, the different filters. Um, this was my favorite. Zoom. Yeah, I mean, I here I, yeah, it's, it's that is my favorite too, actually. Although I kind of like this TV one too. The, the way that you get these is to update your Zoom. Yeah, you got to update your Zoom to get these. Yeah, yeah so and it's actually been making my Zoom crash every once in a while too. So mine not. is not. I've been stable. Okay. So the the it was asked if I wanted to update Zoom, and it seemed to be a pretty large update. So mm -hmm. it took a few minutes to get this one. But man, I have so many fun things in here. There are so many fun things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think this is one of my favorites is the Bandit. Oh yeah, I love and that then, mustache though. I'm also digging the pirate. The pirate's pretty good too. I definitely need to update my app so I can do this for sure. <laughs> I know, it's the best. It's the best, especially when you just show up for a client meeting with the mustache yes. and they're not suspecting. And you know how anyway. cool these glasses are though. I love those. So that's something That's something fun. That's our unofficial coolest thing. And this may be even cooler than what we're, allowed to, we're about to show, but um, in a different way. So this is more fun. I don't know. I don't know. This this new cash flow uh, dashboard widget is pretty cool too. Are I you able to pull it up in the sample company? No, no, it's not there. 
it's not there. Okay. Yeah, but that's okay. Uh, I want, yeah, you okay. can do it. I've got clients that have okay. this live, so. Yeah, and I, I have a sample company that I'm going to try to open up um, if I can get it open uh, that I can show it if we have time. But let's go through this, the screenshot. So where you're going to find this new dash, this cash flow widget is you're going to find it in labs. So when you go to the gear icon inside QuickBooks Online, up at the gear icon at the top right, you're going to go to QuickBooks Labs. And then in QuickBooks Labs, you're going to find this uh, cash flow dashboard widget. A couple of other cool things that are in labs now is we also now have a dark background. So you can do, you can turn on a dark, if those people that like the dark incognito mode, you know, with the black background, you have an option for that. And there was one other thing in labs that I saw that was really cool too, Liz, and I can't remember what it Well, let was. me, I, so I did get it to pull up into some degree. I don't have all the features, oh, okay. so I can you share my screen. All right, I'm going to stop sharing so you can and share. I'm going to show what you can do, but it, uh, okay. some of the things that Heather was showing are not available. So, okay. yet. But this is this is just our sample company file, and so if you go over into Labs and you turn it on, that's what Heather was talking about right there. The themes, yeah, the themes. Yeah, yep. just just uh, turn in, turn that on. Here we go. Now we have it, but you can see the money in, money out with the green and the blue. The mm -hmm. Cash balance, I really like that you're able to see how are they yeah. doing over a period of time. The piece that's not in here yet is the part where you can set events. And so the events I feel like is really, really powerful because then you're able to say going forward, I know this event is going to happen. Right. You can add these different events so you're able to see my cash flow projection. So it's pretty awesome. That part, Yeah. it's an amazing that's tool. It is, it is an amazing tool. The other thing that you guys might have noticed, and this just rolled out, is um, if you go into your reports as an, if you're logged in as an account user and you go to the report center now, and this is only for uh, account users and your QuickBooks Online advanced users, we now have a performance tab where you can create, you may have heard about the ability to create custom charts in QuickBooks um, with the QuickBooks data. Now account users have that ability by going into the reports tab and you'll see a second tab for uh, the performance that you can go in and actually uh, create some of those customizable charts, which is pretty cool. So lots of really cool stuff coming out in QuickBooks Online right now. Um, definitely be reading your emails from Intuit for these new releases. If you haven't signed up for the um, in the know webinars with Intuit, make sure you do that. Um, you can actually sign up right inside the Pro Advisor tab in QuickBooks Online Accountant. So just click on the benefits, scroll down, you'll see the in the webinars. Just click the link and you can get a, a you can subscribe to it. So uh, yeah, so let me just um, I'm going to share my screen again and we will wrap up our. Uh, am I on the right screen here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Cash so there's our cash flow. There's our cash balance. Um, Make sure you visit our website. That's where you're going to be able to view this and all of the other episodes that we've had on Happy Hour. You can connect with our sponsors, get the drink recipes that we are drinking during the episodes, uh, read our blog, or just send us a message. And then don't forget to visit the Funbox website. I actually put in both on Facebook and in Zoom the link for you to go to learn more about Funbox. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, join the Happy Hour Lounge Facebook group and register for the Zoom because in the Zoom there's all kinds of fun things happening like Q&A and chat and mustaches. So um, you definitely want to want to join the fun in here. All right, next, our next episode is going to be on September 8th and we are going to have Intuit Practice Management. Um, if you haven't seen it, this is Intuified, Intuitified, I think that's how you say it, Liz, right. Intuitified, uh, Carbon. So it is, it is just, if you've, if you've looked at Carbon, it is Carbon with a deep integration with Intuit products such as ProConnect Tax Online, LACERT, uh, Tax Software, and QuickBooks Online Accountants. You don't want to miss this. I actually have implemented that in my tax and accounting firm, um, and I'm, I'm loving it. So uh, I can't wait to gush over it on September 8th. Uh, and then we have Transaction Pro on September 22nd. We're going to be taking a look at their new dashboard and some new features. And then we have Fathom Reporting in October, along with Sync with Connects, which is an e-commerce connector for both QuickBooks Online 
and desktop. And then on November 10th, we're going to be back with our good friends at ADP to talk about their uh, benefits and retirement planning services that they offer in addition to payroll. So that's what we've got coming up for you guys over the next few months. Hope to see you guys on our happy hours in the future. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules um, to join us. I hope you learned a lot. And Leslie, thank you so much. This was amazing. Oh, well, thank you for having me. And thanks everyone for sitting through it. I really appreciate it. And uh, hope we hope we can speak again soon.